According to collision theory, the young Earth collided with the protoplanet Theia around 4.5 billion years ago, and the consequences were dramatic. The violent impact blew large amounts of material into space, which then gathered in orbit around the Earth and eventually formed our moon. Today, we'll show you what supports this exciting theory, what Theia looked like, and why part of the celestial body may still be stuck in our home planet. So stay tuned and see for yourself what turbulent past the Earth and the Moon have behind them. Sometimes it takes a full-blown catastrophe for something new to emerge. And although we still cannot say with absolute certainty how Earth's Moon was born, the most widely accepted theory is that our constant companion is the result of a violent collision. As mentioned at the beginning, most experts now believe that the Moon was formed from the debris that was thrown into space billions of years ago when Earth and Theia collided. However, the two celestial bodies did not collide head-on, but at an angle, causing much of Theia and parts of the Earth's crust and mantle to vaporize and then condense again in orbit around the Earth. There, the material clumped together under the influence of gravity and eventually formed the Moon. But how can we know that today? Well, quite simply by examining the composition of both celestial bodies. More precisely, the isotopic composition of the Earth's mantle and the Moon's rock. Basically, our satellite should consist of around 70% Theia material, if the collision theory corresponds to cosmic reality. Since the rock of the individual celestial bodies originates from different areas of the primordial cloud, it also contains different proportions of certain isotopes, but past investigations have long painted a rather sobering picture in this regard. In detail, analyses of lunar meteorites and moon rock had always revealed an extremely high similarity between the Earth and its satellite, and that should not be the case if the latter really consists mainly of fragments of Theia. However, in 2014, scientists at the University of Cologne succeeded in uncovering a crucial detail that immediately brought the Theia theory back into the focus of astronomical interest. The experts examined basalt samples from three Apollo missions that had been stored largely untouched in NASA's special laboratories. The experts released the oxygen from the rocks, cleaned it carefully, and then examined it in a gas mass spectrometer. And indeed, for the first time, they detected a minimal difference in the ratios of the rare oxygen isotope 17O to the most common oxygen isotope 16O. And although the differences were undoubtedly small and difficult to detect, they provided the first concrete evidence that another celestial body besides Earth was involved in the formation of the Moon. But how is it that the isotopic compositions of Earth and the Moon are so similar despite this? Well. Researchers are discussing two possibilities. The first suggests that our young home planet experienced an extremely frosty rendezvous and that Theia consisted mainly of ice. The second is based on the assumption that the collision partner formed at the same distance from the Sun as the proto-Earth and, due to its proximity to the Sun, also consisted mainly of silicates. However, the fact that they originated in the same region would not only explain the chemical similarity but also why the two celestial bodies collided in the first place. What did Theia look like? It is, of course, no coincidence that we know the hypothetical protoplanet as Theia. First used in a paper published in 2000, this is the name of the Titaness Theia in Greek mythology, and thus the name of the mother of the moon goddess Selene. But assuming that the planetary counterpart of the moon mother really existed, this naturally raises a whole series of fundamental questions. What kind of celestial body was Theia? How big was it? What did it look like? And could life even have developed on it? Well, first of all, since Theia is a purely hypothetical protoplanet that has never been directly observed, it's obvious that we cannot answer all these questions with absolute certainty. Despite this, and this is the exciting part, it is possible to get a rough idea of Earth's crash partner based on scientific models and comparisons with known celestial bodies. According to this theory, proponents of the collision theory assume that Theia was similar in size to Mars, meaning that its diameter was probably around 6,000 to 7,000 kilometers. And just to put that into perspective, the Earth's diameter 
is more than 12,700 kilometers. So Theia was quite a bit smaller than our home planet. Nevertheless, with this size, the protoplanet had enough mass to form an approximately spherical shape. And when it comes to its surface, it can be assumed that, just like the young Earth, it was covered with volcanic rock. Since the protoplanets of the solar system were often scarred by impacts, Theia may also have had a rugged surface covered with numerous craters. Basically, we should not forget that Theia was not a unique case. Scientists assume that hundreds or even thousands of protoplanets once swirled around our home world. After the formation of the Sun, the accretion phase began, during which small bodies formed from the cloud of dust and gas surrounding our young host star. More precisely, first planetesimals, then protoplanets, and finally planets. Ultimately, the protoplanets formed into larger bodies through collisions, were destroyed by collisions, fell into the sun, or were ejected from our system. And who knows how many potential worlds were lost in this process? Well, no one does. But what we do know is that life needs a suitable atmosphere to develop. If Theia had one at all, it was probably very thin and consisted of volcanic gases such as carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and water vapor, similar to the early Earth or Venus. However, Theia's atmosphere would have been completely lost in the violent rendezvous with Earth. But what would have happened if Theia and Earth had never collided? What would the chances of life have been? Well, first of all, we should realize that this question does not only apply to Theia, but also to our own home world. Without the collision, there would have been no moon, which would have meant a more unstable Earth axis and a chaotic climate. The tides would have been significantly weaker creating less favorable zones for early life forms. And the different day-night rhythm would also have changed the biological conditions on Earth. Without Theia, the development of life on Earth would not have been impossible, but the circumstances would undoubtedly have been much more extreme and less stable. However, whether Theia itself would have been habitable without the collision is another matter entirely. Theoretically, it would have been possible, but highly unlikely. With dimensions similar to Mars, Theia was large enough to retain an atmosphere and be geologically active. However, its orbit close to Earth would probably have meant that sooner or later, the smaller celestial body would have lost the battle for orbit and been ejected from the solar system. Beyond that, however, we have no idea whether there was water on Theia as it formed in the inner solar system, where volatile substances such as water could not easily condense. But if Theia and Earth originated in the same region, how is it that we have such vast quantities of cool water here? Well, researchers assume that Earth did not inherit all of its water locally, but obtained some of it later through a mixture of different sources. In addition to the water bound in minerals, these include, above all, water-bearing planetesimals, which subsequently supplied us with the elixir of life through impacts. Some models even suggest that Theia itself contained water and brought it to Earth during the collision. However, since Theia was smaller than Earth, it would have lost its atmosphere and water much more quickly even without the crash. For example, due to the effect of solar wind. As a result, the lack of protective mechanisms combined with its unstable orbit would have made it unlikely that it could have retained the water permanently, and thus also unlikely that it would have been habitable in the long term. Where did the remains of Theia go? As mentioned above, the theory states that most of the material ejected during the collision condensed and formed the moon. But what actually happened to the remains of Theia? Were the remaining parts of the protoplanet completely destroyed? Well, not necessarily. An exciting discovery now suggests that Theia is still among us, and that is meant quite literally. Experts generally assume that the heavy elements from Theia's core mainly accumulated in the moon's core. However, the location of Theia's mantle is disputed, but some scientists estimate that parts of the protoplanet still lie dormant at the bottom of the Earth's mantle. Evidence for this is provided by two gigantic anomalies in the lower mantle, each twice the size of the moon. Specifically, these so-called large low-velocity provinces are located beneath the Pacific Ocean and Africa and have the characteristic of strongly slowing down seismic waves. This, in turn, is considered evidence that the mantle material there 
could be particularly hot and soft and differ in composition from the surrounding material. In theory, it would therefore be conceivable that these anomalies are literally not of this world, but originate directly from the protoplanet Theia. Until now, however, it was believed that all remnants of the celestial body had long since been wiped out in the Earth's interior and homogenized by dynamic mantle convection. Furthermore, it was unclear why the Theia remnants should have formed two such clearly defined lumps in the first place. To get to the bottom of this mystery, scientists at Arizona State University reconstructed the collision theory in simulations and uncovered something surprising. While the upper mantle formed a liquid magma ocean immediately after the collision, the lower mantle may have been largely solid and cooler than previously thought. For the Theia remnants, this means that they may have escaped complete mixing with terrestrial material if they were dense and heavy enough. If this was the case, the protoplanetary remnants were not scattered by mantle convection after sinking, but only swept together at the corresponding locations under Africa and the Pacific. In other words, it's possible that the gigantic lumps in the Earth's interior are nothing more than the remnants of a foreign celestial body, and thus evidence of a violent collision that gave us not only the moon, but perhaps even life itself. And now it's time for your click to collide with the subscribe button. Simply press the thumbs up and subscribe to never miss another post from us. See you soon.